Amen. Amen. I pray you receive God's blessing in Jesus' name. Um, and we're going to the word. We are going to the word. Amen. We should be excited about the word. Everything that we've done is the word, but we're getting to a more formal uh, part of the word. Um, and so we don't have a guest with us today. We have our, like, additional pastor. Like, we have pastors, but, like, an additional pastor. Pastor Enrique Holmes is here. Come on, can we stand and honor the man, God, of man of God? He came to us all the way from Georgia, from the Harvest, Harvest Tabernacle. And so we honor the Lord for his leader who allowed him to come here. Um, and so if you've ever heard Pastor Enrique before, you better get ready to hear the word, to laugh, because he's funny, and to be delivered all at the same time. It's a simultaneous praise. He's going to them all. So I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet as we receive. I know y'all think y'all stand a long time. We stand up much longer than y'all. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you can stand on your feet. Um, as we receive Pastor Enrique Holmes, as the Lord leads him in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise in this room. Thank you. Come on, for real, give God praise in this room. I know we've been praising him, but what are Sundays for? <laughs> what are Sundays for? Do me a favor and um, give God praise once again for our pastor, our apostle. He's my New York pastor. <laughs> this so happens to be my brother and my friend and my boss. And um, he's very bossy. I didn't know this praise until too recently. And we can't we can't praise God for him without praising God for his lovely wife. Can we just give that praise for Minister Tracy? Also, clap your we're going to clap just a little bit longer, I promise. Clap your hands for all of the pastors, elders, ministers. I'm going to get Baptists on your members, mothers, deacons, members, and friends. Clap your hands for I don't want to miss anybody. Clap your hands for your neighbor because they feel left out. They need a praise. Grab your neighbor by the hand really quick. We've already experienced the move of God. We're in the move of God right now. Grab your neighbor by the hand if you like them. If you don't like them, there's room in my, I have, there's a seat up here that's available. I'm sure you will like. Okay, he said, gotcha. Grab your neighbor by the hand and just say, neighbor, whatever the enemy has been doing to you, and trying to set up against you. As of this moment, it's over. I ain't planning, but I just have to make that announcement that the enemy's plan on your life just expired. I prophesy that what you came in here with, you ain't leaving out with it. Things are changing, and you don't even know it. As we have been praising and worshiping the Lord, the times have changed. You slip from morning into afternoon, and the Lord says, just like that, your season is getting ready to shift. Somebody just celebrate God for the fact that God just shut the devil down again. Name. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the scripture, and um, somewhere in here, God's gonna just interrupt us. And and I'm gonna y'all already know. I'm gonna just go with whatever the Holy Spirit has us to do. I'm so glad that we've been exhorted. I'm so glad that we have been shifted and prayed for. Demons have been casted out and all those things. Because the Lord gave me a word of instruction for us. Um, and I, I guarantee you, we're going to stand for the word. And, and when you sit down, I'll still be standing. All right? So we're going to give God praise for that. So 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, it says, For he says, in the time of my favor. Somebody say, my favor. My favor. Time of my favor, I heard you. 
And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Before you sit down, I need you to do me a favor. Just tell your neighbor our title for today. Just say, neighbor, the time of your life. You can sit down in the presence of the Lord. While you're sitting down, just tell somebody the time of your life. The time of your life, the time of your life. Father God, we just thank you for your presence in this room. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to move quick. So when God gave me this title for today, I was like, yes. <laughs> An evangelistic and exhorting word, you know, the time of your life. You're about to have the time of your life. But then he switched it up on me. And he asked me a question. He said, Enrique, what are you doing with the time of your life? Are you just sitting around becoming a professional planner, planning but not producing? Are you sitting around becoming a restless receiver, waiting on something to be handed to you? Are you sitting around becoming a wishful watcher, watching everyone from the sideline but never getting in the game? You can talk back to me. The Bible says in John 9 and 14 that we must work the works of him who sent us while it is day for when night comes, what? No man can work. And so the Lord took me to Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 and, and it says I have seen something else under the sun the race is not to the swift watch this or the battle to the strong it says nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant watch this or favor to the learned but it goes on to say but time and chance happens to us all the scripture moved me a little bit because I realized that time and chance doesn't always just come to those who are ready. Time and chance doesn't wait on you to have it all together. Time and chance doesn't just happen when you have the funds for the vision. Or those who feel like they are ready. Have you ever been upset with yourself because um, an opportunity presented itself or was presented to you and you knew you were not ready for it? And you knew you needed more time to prepare yourself for it? Yeah, that's because time and chance doesn't just happen when you're ready because we all know that time waits for no one. It doesn't just happen when you've dotted every I and when you cross every T. No, it happens to, somebody say it happens to us all. Yet your responsibility is to ensure that when time and chance knocks at your door, that you show up. You, you have to prepare now for then. So, like, look at Pastor G. He, he, he's now in a position to start monetizing what he does on a regular basis. Having intentional, life-changing conversations with individuals. And be took, because he took his moment, because he took advantage of his time, and because he took advantage of his chance... Oh, let me stop right there real quick. Somebody just say, I'm about to take a chance. I'm, I bump the lines, bump the waiting list. I'm a, about to take a chance. He, he didn't consider the oversaturated market because you know that's the new excuse for people to walk in fear. The, the market is oversaturated. He, he didn't worry about what was going on, uh, who was already doing, you know, podcasts and things. No, no, because he took a chance, he has now leveled up in his his faith now because of that one decision to produce the last thing that he produced is the very least that he can produce why because his obedience raised the bar mm, mm. now when he does the play or when he does the movie or when he does the documentary, what he fought with to produce talk to me, he won't have to fight with, with the next thing. You know, uh, that, that's, that's what happens. You're, when you obey, it removes the red tape for the next. Yeah, that's how people miss their moment because they feel like time will wait on them. They, I, I asked myself in January of this year, and I can sense in the spirit that some of you guys in this room have recently asked yourself this question. I asked, I asked myself, I asked God, I said, did I miss my time? 
because I took a, a break from releasing music because I said, God, I got to enjoy my life. I, I, I started traveling. I started getting myself together, started overcoming rejection and offense and all those different things. I went back to school, got a degree, finna start school on Monday to get my master's. And I just really st- I had, a, ha- had a whole career change and I did all these things. And so finally, um, you know, when it was time for me to, you know, think about doing music again, I rather so with the question of did I miss my time? Maybe I just remain a featured artist. You know, I've been doing some dope features. I was featured on y'all record, you know. You know, and so I was like, God, maybe that's, you know, maybe I could just write or do other things. And then so I, I asked the Lord, I said, did I miss my time? And one of my friends actually asked me, Enrique, do you believe that someone can miss their time? The answer is yes. I mean, I like, God, you know, the answer is yeah, you can absolutely miss your time. Time is so precious. And the thing is, time, it can come back. Time can't. Opportunity can. But the thing about it, I was talking to Pastor Naomi, but when the opportunity presents itself again, you're no longer who you were before. So it's not going to be how it would have been. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Example, for those in the back who are still confused, let's keep it light. You, you, you had an opportunity to buy some stocks at a very low price. You were very skeptical and you waited a week. A week later, those stocks tri- tripled in price. So now what you could have got for the low low, you have, to pray, you have to pay three times the price because you allowed fear to stop you from making your move in the right time. All right, you, you can absolutely miss your time. And although it can come back around, you sometimes miss the benefits of doing the first go round. When, when, when thinking about time, it seems as if we don't have enough time in a day. Looking at where we are right now, we're almost at the end of August, headed into September. And it seems as if 2022 is slipping away. I got almost like 40 days before I'm about to be married. It's, it just seems like it's around the corner. One, one thing I realized, about time is that time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past in the present and in the future regarded as a whole and so one thing about time is that time is one of the only things in life that we could never get back once it's gone I don't I don't care how much you pray I don't care how much you wish upon a star I don't care how much you rub the genie in the bottle is witchcraft anyway you're, you're not getting back your teenage years the med, the stallion knees are long gone they're long gone but but what you can do is make the best of the time that you're living in right now and that you will live in in the future. Somebody say timing is everything. Uh, oh my God, Jesus could have easily prophesied that someone was going to betray him way before the Last Supper. Talk back to me. He could have. He could have. But if Jesus would have spoke too soon, he could have thrown off the whole set. Y'all know Peter. Some of y'all are just like Peter. If Jesus would have told Peter a few chapters before that somebody was going to betray him in the crew, Peter would have been going and interrogating the disciples, trying to do everything that he could to stop Jesus from being taken away. Think about it. If Noah, if Noah would have waited any later than obeying God when he told him to build the ark although it took him a hundred oh, almost a hundred years to build it if he would have even waited a day late the rain would have came and his product would have been unfinished mm. Noah <laughs> Noah didn't have time to wait for the evidence of rain some of us are too analytical that you're going to miss your miracle because you're waiting on the evidence to say yes. When God says you're the fact that you're breathing is the evidence. Mm. Oh God, somebody just say time and sit down G because you're going to push me. Somebody just say time is everything. I got to set this groundwork real quick and I promise we're going to fly. I'm learning how to obey God without evidence. Ephesians 5, 
15 through 16, the King James Version says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Watch this, redeeming the time, because the days we live in are evil. The phrase redeeming the time is also found in Colossians 4 and 5. It says, walk in wisdom. She was so on it. I, I love her so much. She, she was so on it. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. In both passages, redeeming the time is basically geared toward wisdom in how we walk. Wisdom in how we live. To redeem something means to buy it back, to get it back, to regain possession of it. So time is a gift from God and the enemy's desire is to steal your gift. Not your singing voice. Your gift of time. Mm. Mm. Let's keep going. <laughs> and to be honest, none of us knows how much time we are allotted on this earth. O only God knows how much time we have on this earth to make decisions now that will impact eternity. And so when God says that we should be redeeming the time, he wants us to live in a constant awareness, not fear, but a constant awareness of the ticking clock and make the most of the time that we have. In fact, in Ephesians 5 and 16, instead of saying redeeming the time, Ephesians 5 and 16 says making the most of every opportunity. Tell somebody, make the most of every opportunity. So, 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 so this is where we turn the corner. I begin to ask God, Adele, why should we have to redeem the time if we could just take advantage of it the first time around? And the Lord began to share with me. He gave me an answer. He said, the reason why people are having to redeem what they lost is because the spirit of laxation and procrastination has penetrated the hearts of my people. They feel as if they have all the time in the world, so they delayed their obey. Can we be honest? The fire that you once had isn't as fierce as it used to be. That passion that you once had isn't as bold as it used to be. That drive that you once had isn't as persistent as it used to be. That commitment that you once had to your local church isn't as intentional as it used to be. Something happened, and you tried to worship over it. <laughs> you tried to dance on it. You tried to praise your way through it. But, but, but somehow or another, if we really be honest in the room today, you're still battling with it. You used to be a go-getter. Nobody had to tell you to go do it. You used to be a self-starter. You used to say yes to God quickly. But, but now what was in the forefront is now on the back burner. Oh, God, you used to be dependable, but now nobody's assigning you anything. So something has happened. If we really be honest, something happened about two, three years ago, right before this pandemic kicked in. And all this pandemic did was pulled out of you or was already laying dormant. The pandemic gave us an excuse to do what we did not confront. Mm -hmm. You were a little lazy before the pandemic. You got a lot lazy. <laughs> you were a little unfaithful to your church before the pandemic. Now you only come on third Sundays and fourth. Mm. Mm. You were a little disobedient to God before the pandemic. Now you just Miss Burger King. You have it your way. <laughs> oh, God, something has happened. I'm making you laugh because you're getting deliverance through your laughter. Because if the truth be told, you laughed about it long enough. <laughs> it's been funny too long. We've, we, we've pacified it long enough. We knew you started acting crazy in January. And so that you wouldn't leave the church, we didn't even confront it. Because we know that you carry the spirit of offense. We're coming down your road real quick. 
people don't like to say nothing to you. And so you think you all good even though you know you're not all good because the pastor haven't confronted you yet. But, but you know you've been not faithful in your tithing. You, you know that you come in at 12 o'clock and we start at 11 o'clock. And it's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock for the huddle. But, but you come when you want to. You know that you're only excited on the praise thing, not them. When you leading, but, but, you, but you, you're dead as a doorknob when it's somebody else's turn to lead. You, 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 you come on, let, let, let's, let's go. We, we, we understand that, that you're only excited around tax time because that's when you got a little money in your pocket. But, but we have to confront this demon before it completely overtakes you. Because the thing about it is the devil will make you believe that you have all the time in the world until he takes your last breath. And then you'll look at your life and realize I have lived more time in disobedience than I have in obedience to God. I'm not telling you nothing that I don't know. I, I know you feel convicted. You're not offended. You're convicted. I, I learned the difference between the two. Offense it feels a lot like conviction until you check it. It's all right. Just smile through it. They won't know it's you. And, and <laughs> something happened, and it didn't happen overnight. It did not happen overnight. You, you, you haven't been feeling yourself for quite some time. You haven't been feeling your, yourself for quite some time, but don't feel bad, church. This is not a word to scare you or hurt your feelings. This is a word to convict you back into a place of intention. Realizing that time is of the essence and I can't afford to waste my time. Somebody just say, I can't afford to waste no more time. Not on the man, not on the woman, not on the boy, not on the girl. I don't got time to waste time going back and forth with you. It is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. I don't have time to force relationships. <laughs> my pastor doesn't have time to counsel the same demons for five years. Because we're building. We're building. <laughs> Just keep saying amen and they won't know it's you. You're giving yourself away. <laughs> Offense has a look. Oh, and offense is married to silence. So just make some noise. Make a joyful noise. For real, the enemy will yoke you up with offense. Use it for some. Let it go. So, so this is where I just kind of let you know that I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me too because I've been there. Is what I wrote. I've been there, in a place, <laughs> and in a space. I'm being so. I'm being. I know I'm being funny, but but I'm being so serious. Your pastor walked me through deliverance. No lie. Hey, Amen. Hey. Amen, Pastor Naomi. They walked me through deliverance because I've been there in a place where I recognized that something changed about me, but I couldn't explain it. Have you ever been there before? I, like I could feel that something was wrong with me. Something changed, but I couldn't properly communicate it. So I tried to lead worship over it, and I, the bookings did not stop. I was just offended from Georgia to Canada. <laughs> That same offense that I had, that I thought I left in Georgia, followed me to New York and, and to Florida. And, and people would ask me, Enrique, what's wrong with you? There's something different about you. And I'd be like, I'm good. Knowing good and well that I was not good. But I use I'm good because I did not know how to properly communicate what I was feeling. But I know I'm off. And I've been off for a minute. I've been off for a minute. No, you get your breakthrough when I worship, but, but I don't get a breakthrough. No, you get a breakthrough when I preach and lay hands and I got a word from God, but I'm not getting a breakthrough because the moment I get back in my car, I'm back in my place of offense. But by the time I get back to my house, I'm back in my place of perversion. And what the enemy would try to get you to do is count your works as deliverance. But a move of God does not mean that you have been delivered. Mm. We're almost there. We're almost there, I promise you. I can literally, I, we, we're almost there. So sit down. And so in a place, I was in that place and I was in this space. 
where I can sense it because I'm prophetic, Adele. And I try to administer self-deliverance. But you ha- that's the point of submission. Submission is not to only to people who are on the same level as you because you'll never get delivered. You have to submit yourself under something greater, which means that you're going to have to humble yourself because I know your crew has made you feel like you're the best of the best. <laughs> But that's greater. Somebody just say, that's greater, that's greater, that's greater than me, that's greater than, I'm all that in a bag of chips, but there's a bigger bag. I'm the, I'm the bite size. There's somebody that's the family size. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm an individually wrapped Starburst, but there's somebody else that's the shareable bag, unwrapped, just e- easy access. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but that's what God told me to say. <laughs> Woo! Oh, somebody just say that. There's someone greater than me. And I could not get so carnal in my friendships that I couldn't let them know I need backup. I'm battling with offense. I'm about to leave my church, and I need y'all to pray for me. I know... Can I be real with you? I know I'm supposed to be married within the next couple of whatever, but I'm, I still have offense from my last breakup. Can you cover me so I don't get married out of formality and end up divorced in about three, four months? Because time is everything. You'll get married to prove a point to you and them. And le- Never mind. All right, let's keep going. But I'm happy in Jesus today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's keep going. <laughs> oh, we, we almost there. We almost there. And everybody's asking, what's wrong? But some, I've learned that some people ask what's wrong not to hear what's wrong. They ask what's wrong out of habit. Because before you can even answer, they're already walking away. Hey, you okay today? How you doing, baby? You all right? All right. Like, well, I was going to tell you that I was battling with suicide, but I'm just like, guess I just put it in my back pocket. Lift your hands and give God praise. <laughs> and, and I realized when I was going through that season, my, my, my dominant and my go-to thing was to retreat or shut down. And there's some of y'all, I'm talking to you. I ain't looking at you, but I'm talking to you. Like what, you what you've been fighting for for the past couple of years, what you've been fighting to do is not shut down. And you've been fighting to not run away. And you've been fighting, this for most of y'all, you've been fighting to not retreat into that little cave and isolate yourself where they tell you that most prophets like to be. Not me. I like my friends. I like my friends. I'm not sitting in no cave by my lonesome. There are seasons where you need to walk alone and retreat to God, but it ain't no depressing stuff. I'm not, no, stop. That's, I don't know. That's all I had. Stop. <laughs> Shoot, I'm not playing with you. All right. <laughs> or retreat to my cave because that's, that's my go-to. Gia tell you. Pa- Apostle, Apostle Gia tell you. Sorry. <laughs> He'll tell you. Bruh, it wasn't enough for me. I'm like, all right. And I will lead worship and go forth. And before they ring, I'll say ring the bell, and I'm a school teacher now. Before, before they say the benediction, I'm in my car. Before they say amen, I'm at my house. <laughs> and I live 40 minutes away from my church. <laughs> because offense will cause you to function as if things are normal with no fruit. You want to you you know if you're really an offense? Look at the fruit of your life. You can't be fruitful and offended. You can't be. Offense literally puts the brakes on your progression and keeps you stuck at the place that you got offended. Offense is a time snatcher. Let's keep going. We're almost there. 
But don't fret, church. <laughs> there is an answer. Just, just, just tell somebody you're not alone. I, I, I've, I've been there too. I'm there too. I just came out. <laughs> and so I never preach out of Joel G. But, but, but the Lord took me to Joel. Joel 2 and 5. It says, and I will restore. I'll restore to you the years that the locusts. I feel like this is where we're going to make a turn, Adele. The years that the locusts had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm has eaten up. I began to study the caterpillar. Never have I preached this before. I began to study the canker worm. And I began to study the palmer worm to see what they normally like to chew on and on. And after looking it up, Apostle G, I, I learned that the only thing that they like to eat on are leaves. So I said, okay. God, I'm, you're going to give me revelation on this lunch break at these people's school. It amazes me that the Bible, my kids going to be saved before this semester is over, watch. <laughs> oh, oh, I promise you, I slathered that thing with Maverick City, <laughs> Tasha Cobb's prayers for Mother Stats. I mean, we were tearing before they walk in the room. Miss Lyons, it smells good, and here's the anointing. <laughs> Frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> Okay, for real. I'm not playing with y'all. But it amazes me that the Bible would compare, because the Bible, it says, I will restore the years that these creatures, insects, ate up. They eat leaves. It, it, it amazes me that the Bible would compare the years of our lives to leaves. As we know, leaves change during every season. Go with me. It's one season. They may be this color, but then in the next season, they change up on you. Oh, God. In, in one season, they stand firm, and then in another season, they fall off. The enemy, the Lord told me this. He said, gee, that's where the enemy comes in. In the season that looks like your down season, mm, that's where... God began to tell me that we have to understand that every season matters. And don't allow the enemy to take advantage of what seems like your down season. Watch this. The Lord told me this, that the enemy distracted a lot of y'all with affliction. Psalms 119 and 71 says, it was good for me. To be afflicted, watch this, so that I might learn. Mm. It took you so long to see the good in affliction because you took it personal. Let me talk to this side because somebody right there, man. I, I know it hurt. I know it sucked. I know it was unfair. But you're going to have to learn how to endure hard times like a good soldier. Somebody just say this. I will not be a repeat offender. The best way to become a repeat offender, the best way to have to repeat a season is when you don't learn the lesson the first time. I, I, I had to study these insects a little more, G, because that wasn't it. And I realized that the caterpillar, that the canker worm, and that the palmer worms, they eat very slow. Matter of fact, their teeth are so small that the only way that you can see them is through a magnifying glass. God began to show me how the enemy has been taking the years of our lives by eating away at the seasons of our lives. What the enemy does is he slowly but surely eats away at your passion. He slowly but surely eats away at your submission. Slowly but surely eats away at your obedience and, and your seed and your convictions and your loyalty and your commitment. There's a story I got to tell you about a man who was being robbed and didn't even know it. 
One, one of his employees who so happened to be his assistant set the boss's account up to deposit $12.99 every other day into his account. He did this because he knew that to the boss's eyes, it would look like a subscription to something. And, and so because the boss was making so much money, because the boss was moving and shaking so much, he didn't even notice that it was going on until the pandemic hit. The job had to make a few cuts. Uh, and they had to cut back on spending. So every dime that, that was coming out of his account counted. And, and as he began G, to go through his banking information with his accountant, he realized that for the last eight years, his assistant had been stealing from him. And so for eight years, for eight years, $12.99 times four times a week times four times a month, Five if you get lucky. Uh, times 12, over $100,000 had been taken out of his account over eight years. And he didn't notice it until everything came crashing down. It didn't happen overnight. And you're wondering, why? how did I get to this place of burnout? I'm trying to tell you that the enemy was making little withdrawals. Then it has been making little withdrawals and the very moment that you ignored the sign of decline was the moment that the enemy literally took another bite out of your life. It's the small things. It's the minor things, the minor details that the enemy likes to work little by little. The Bible says in Solomon 2 and 15 that it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Galatians 5 and 9 says that a little leaven can ruin the whole batch. The time you allowed that offense to sit in your heart, the enemy was slowly, slowly but surely eaten away at your time. The time you allowed that anger and bitterness to linger, the enemy was slowly but surely eaten away at your time. Oh, but this is where we turn the corner. I got good news for you, church. The good news is that today is your day of deliverance. I come to disrupt the enemy's feast on your life. And I prophesy that you're about to come back into an awareness of the season and the times that you're in. Here's the thing, Adele, I need you real quick. Because for 20 people that can respond right, I want to prophesy to you that the enemy might have eaten the leaves, but the fruit is still intact. Here's the thing, his teeth ain't big enough to eat the fruit. So you're wondering, do I have to start over? No. But you do have to come into an awareness of where it went wrong. Mm. The fruit is still intact. The leaves might have been consumed, but the fruit still remains. Somebody just say, all is not lost. But what you must do is locate the place or the places where the canker worm came in. Locate the place or the places where the caterpillar and the palmer worms have been feasting in your life. Instead of avoiding it like you want to do. Instead of walking away from it and singing over it. No, you have to take time to confront this thing. You have to, you're going to have to take your time back. Find out where the enemy slipped in. You can play Adele. Find out where the offense slipped in. Find out where that thought slipped in and bring it under subjection. Because the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know it, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You're going to have to snatch your time back. Have to be like Matt St. Waters and say, I'm reclaiming my time. Ugh. I will not sit back and watch my life pass me by. Y'all, I promise you, I wanted this to be a word where we shouted on. But the Lord told me, 
that Enrique, I need you to bring some people into an awareness that it's not okay to function this way. This function is not the will of God for your life. And it's snatching time for you. But somebody just said, I'm taking my life back today. You're going to learn how to endure hard times well. And I'm not saying that it's going to feel good. Because <laughs> Lord knows. Lord knows. Lord knows. Lord knows. Lord knows. Doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy it all the time. Doesn't mean that you'll be perfect not what this is about but the, the Lord told me that the good news about hard times is that you never leave out of hard times empty handed I got proof Job experienced hard times Abraham experienced hard times Mary and Martha experienced hard times the woman with the issue of blood experienced hard times Blind Bartimaeus experienced hard times. Even our Savior Jesus experienced hard times. But the one thing that they all had in common was that they came out of hard times with something new. They came out of those hard times with something better. And you have to realize that hard times don't last, but tough people do. You, tough times might seem like they'll last forever, but they can't. They, they come with an expiration date. I need everybody in the room just to stand on your feet and, and mm. second Corinthians we got to go back to our scripture second Corinthians 6 and 2 says for he says this is God in the time of my favor I heard you and in the day of salvation I help you I tell you now is the time of God's favor now is the day of salvation favor literally means God stepping into your situation to make a worthwhile difference uh, the Lord told me that you're getting ready to have the time of your life because you're becoming more intentional about the time of your life You've been experiencing seasons, but you're getting ready to enter into your time. You've been only operating in chronos, but the Lord told me to tell you that he's about to give you a kairos. According to Psalms 102 and 13, there is a set time for the favor of God to manifest in your life. And time is literally and generally defined in the Greek as chronos and as kairos. Chronos represents a chronological time that is calculated in minutes and seconds and hours and days and weeks and months and years. But kairos represents God a God appointed time when something occurs. Kairos is, is a God divine intervention in your life where he literally steps in the middle of time to accelerate or bring to pass some occurrences or events on your behalf. Mm. A set time, a favor is now. The Lord told me to prophesy that as you repent, come out of this time capsule that the enemy has tried to put you in he says that's when I'm going to give you what is called an overwhelming favor that means that the favor that was held up is literally getting ready to catch up with you and overtake you Acts 3 and 19 says this and then we're going to shift it says repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out watch this that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord the times of refreshing the Bible says are now there's some people in this room who need a reset meaning just God just do away with I don't even want the remnants of it. I need a hard reset. You ever had to reset your phone back to factory settings? Because 
you know, you're getting ready to get an upgrade and you're like, I don't want the next person to be in my business. It literally wipes out everything. But I wasn't getting an upgrade. I just needed my current phone to work properly. And they told me that you got, I had a virus on my phone. And the only way to have my phone to work as it should be working is if I deleted everything out of my phone. Some of y'all, it dates back to like years and years and years ago. You need a reset. Just lift your hands at that shoe. I got, I need a, okay, no judgment. I need a reset. But then that's some of us. I was scrolling the internet the other day. And I was trying to sign into the ticket thing. And it just started glitching, acting stupid. And I was like, you know, I, I'm the kind of person, I've been black my whole life. And one thing black people are gonna do, we gonna restart something. If a computer don't work right, hold that button until it restarts, God bless. Mm -mm. And then if somebody says, my computer ain't work right, did you restart it? We, the, the worst thing we could have learned how to do was hold the power button and, and, the, and, the, and the volume button. To re we think we work for Apple now. We are Apple Care. Come, come on. No, I know what to do. Come here. But I realized something that what was going on with my computer, it wasn't worth the reset. I just needed to refresh the screen. So there's some people in the room who need a reset. But then there's some of us who just like, I just need a refreshing. I need a refreshing. Because something is glitching in my passion. Something is glitching in my commitment. Something ain't the same no more. I can't explain it, but I recognize that it's there. I need a refreshing. I've been trying to be loyal to my position that I've been missing my deliverance. Hmm. Because the thing about it, you don't have a revelation of your pastor yet. You don't think that you could go to him and say, Dude, I need a Sunday off because something is wrong. Something is off. But this is what I hear the Lord say. Nobody can do it for you. I need you for the next 30 seconds without saying a word. Go back in your mind to that place where you realize something changed. Go back in your mind. Come on, if you got to close your eyes, go back in your mind to that place where you first got offended. Go back to that place in your mind where you first realized that something was, was a little wrong. Go back to that place in your life where you let just a little sin in. Go, go, go back to that place. Come on, go back to that place. Because we about to confront it. Now, you don't have to be afraid because you got reinforcement. I'm going to count to three. Don't linger. Mm -hmm. Gee, I feel something about the break in this room. And what has been hard for Fresh Start is about to get easy. Because God is literally about to catch some people up. In their maturity. We're not in the place where we're lacking gifts because your gift grows with you but some of us we get stifled in our maturity some of, some of y'all need to go back even further to when you were 6 years old 12 years old before you left your last church to come here you carried it over here so what I need you to do now, when I count to three, everybody that says, I need a reset, I need you to flood the altar over here. Everybody who says, I need a refreshing, I need you to flood the altar over here. And when you get to the altar, 
I need you to lift up your voices. If you got a heavenly language, begin to just penetrate the atmosphere because I believe that your Kairos moment is about to connect with your Kronos and God is about to catch you up. One. And forget about your title. You gotta be broken before the Lord. My deliverance came, can I be honest? My deliverance came when I stopped lying about what was wrong with me. My deliverance came when I said, gee, I am sick of church. I, I'm about to leave. I don't want this anymore. My heart is broken. I'm offended. When I got to a place where I was able to be broken enough for God to be able to fill that place, that's when deliverance happened. And that's when God accelerated my life. And I prophesy in this room that the same grace that's on my life is the same grace that's about to be on your life. God's about to catch you up and what you should have did years ago. God says he's about to put a grace on you to do now. One, two, three, somebody move.